Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you're seeing me, my name is Jasmine, aka Jazz Hustles, and I started my first online business selling on Amazon in the beginning of this year, January 2023. As you guys can tell by the title, this was a highly requested video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to find products to resell on Amazon. We're going to be using two softwares today and you can find them in the link in my description. But basically we're going to be using Selleramp and Keepa. So you already know I am a cheap gal, so I don't like spending too much on softwares. So these two softwares are actually only $20 a month, so it's super affordable. Without further ado, let's get to this video. Okay, so I just pulled up an item that I have recently sold. I don't sell them anymore, but I'm just gonna show you guys why I chose to sell this item It is the latte and frappe caramel mix. Um, I got them from Walmart at $13.24 they actually used to be I want to say like $11 and now they raised the price so I think that's like the main reason why I stopped selling them here this is the seller amp software so basically you just want to make sure to check that you're eligible to sell so I am ungated in groceries so I'm able to sell this item once you get ungated in the full grocery category you'll be able to sell most grocery and gourmet food items beverages anything that's in the Amazon you'll be able to sell um, next thing you're gonna want to look at is the BSR which is called the best sellers rank you always want the BSR to be under 100k so we can see here that there is a BSR of 11k and it's also in the top 1% meaning that it's a good item in this category like the instant coffee category so the lower the BSR the better it is and the higher the BSR the worse it is so I usually look for BSRs under 100k now we have the estimated sales we do see that we have an alert and the alert is variation so this is a variation alert and that means that there's multiple flavors in this listing so 514 is not how much times this product sells a month it's how much all of these products sells a month so you can see here it says estimated sales are shared across all variations and this is the second software that I recommended to you guys the keep a graph you're gonna go to where it says variations on the top here and it's basically going to let you know how much percent um, ratings each product has so you're gonna go scroll to the right the product that has the trophy means that it sells the most out of all the other flavors so we can see that the caramel macchiato one that we are looking at sells 54% of the time um, if you wanted to sell the vanilla bean we see that this one sells 18% of the time. Cookie butter, 3%. Matcha green, 4%. So I would say the worst flavor to sell is the cookie butter, of course, because it only has 3% ratings. So what we're going to do now that we have the ratings percentage, we're going to take 54% of 514 so the product that we're looking at actually sells about 277 times a month so that's really important to look at there's no other way you can find that out unless you have the keepa software so i definitely recommend it like let's say we wanted to sell the cookie butter one the one that had only three percent it only sells about 15 times a month which is super bad so you definitely want to make sure that you look at the variations and see how much times that product that you're actually looking at is selling max cost I never look at it's usually never accurate it's basically just seller amp telling you how much it might cost you to buy this item next thing is the cost price you're gonna just put the price you plan on buying it for here and then sale price is the price you plan on selling it for so right now I see that there's no buy box 
and the buy box is basically the first price customers see once they click on a listing but there's no buy box for this listing right now but most of the time sellers are going to want to try and win the buy box so then they can make the most sales rather than not having the buy box and having to wait for your units to sell a little longer but you can still make sales without winning the buy box so it's basically up for grabs for like any seller who is trying to resell this item this is just like ranks and prices the bsr tells you again um there's no buy box so there's no line for that um amazon if amazon was on this listing it would say their price and if they have the buy box it tells you the lowest FBA seller, lowest FBM seller, how much the Kipo chart has dropped. And then we have the alerts panel. So it's basically just telling you if you're eligible to sell, um, if it's a hazmat or dangerous goods item, you have to apply separately to become a hazmat or dangerous goods seller. So I haven't applied and I don't really plan on it. It's just too much work. Amazon share buy box, meaning they are never on the listing. Sometimes it would say probably, meaning that they've been on it before or if they're currently selling it. Private label, unlikely. You're not gonna wanna resell an item that is private label because you can get in trouble like that. Basically, private label is when a seller makes their own listing and no other seller can hop on that listing. Like it's only their listing. So you can't hop on any private label listings, but it says unlikely, so that's fine. There is an IP analyst, no known IP issues. IP is basically intellectual property. And I also have another software that um, is free and it's called IP Alerts by Seller Assistant. It lets you know if there's any suspected IP issues with the brand the brand contacts a few sellers and tells them to stop selling their items because they don't want like just anyone reselling their item they have to have authorized people to sell their items so they will contact you and tell you to stop selling their items and if you don't listen to them and you try and keep selling it they will contact amazon and they'll try to get your selling privileges taken away so it's really important to look through that that's why i have two of them because sometimes seller amp isn't that accurate and sometimes ip alert isn't that accurate so you just want to make sure you have both just in case because you never know but yeah ip alert by seller assistant is free It'll tell you if it's multiple. If it is multiple, then you'd probably be better off doing FBM. And then it also has a small keep a graph on here. So you can start off with just the seller amp software, but it is recommended to get both softwares because there's no way of finding out about the variations monthly sales thing that I just showed you on seller amp. Like you have to have keep up for that. Seller amp basically has a small keep up price history, and I'm going to show you how to read a keep a chart soon. And then it also has like little offer count chart. Also, if there's any suspected IP issues with the brand or the listing, then you can just check to see if there's current sellers on it and if there is like 30 sellers in the beginning of the month to now there's only like five sellers at the end of the month that's how you know that the brand is contacting other sellers to stop selling their brand and then here we have the profit calculator it's basically the same as the top but it has a little more information the total fees discount profit margin and break even sale price you can always switch it if you're doing FBA or FBM. It tells you the profit, the ROI. You always want to profit over two to three dollars and you want an ROI, which is return on investment over 25 to 30 percent and up total fees we have here. The referral fee taken out, which is 375. Then we have the FBA fee, which is 540 and then the inbound shipping fee, which is 29 cents per unit for this product. So when you go on your seller ramp, you're you're going to want to go on your settings and input the inbound shipping because it already calculates the referral fee and the FBA fee but not the inbound shipping so you have to input that in your settings so then you can take that out of your profit so you just have to put inbound shipping 35 cents per pound um, I don't really use the Google Sheets or the notes and tags or the discounts this is one part that I use all the time which is basically listing all of the sellers that are currently selling this item the FBM sellers and the FBA sellers. You can switch it to just FBA if you're just doing FBA because we're mainly competing against FBA. And then it also tells you how much FBA sellers are selling it. So we have 17 here and four FBM sellers. So the way you would want to price your item, let's say, remember this product sells about 200 times a month, right? We want to make at least 25 to 30% ROI, right? So I see that there's one FBA seller who has four in stock and their price is 20 five dollars and their ROI is only 18% so I wouldn't want to list there 
but if I wanted my units to sell quickly, I would want to list the cheapest. But remember that this sells about 200 times a month, so you can always list higher, but just not too high because you don't want to list too high and never have your units sell. These sellers can always restock. So I would probably list mine. I see a seller has 11 in stock and their price is $27.90 with a 36% ROI. So I probably wouldn't mind listing just a little above them. So then I just can, you know, skip the seller who has 11 in stock. So I'll probably put my price at $27.89, matching these two sellers that also have that price. So they'll be making $4.78 per unit with 36% ROI, which is really good. If you had more patience with your item, then of course you can list around here. So the sellers here are making about, like if they were to buy it at the same price that we were buying it at, like at Walmart, then they would be making around $6, $7, $9 profit. It just really depends on how patient you are with your unit sales if you weren't as patient then you can always list up here and make still a fair amount of profit but if you were to wait a little longer you can make like nine dollar profit that's pretty much seller amp this is what it usually looks like but the main things i look at in the keepa software is the pink line the green line and when it has like amazon on the listing then i'll look at that but amazon's never been on this listing so we don't even have to look at that so i would just take this out and take this out so i took the orange line and the blue line off i also took the purple line off as well so mainly the green line and the pink line is what i usually look at so the pink line is the buy box so there hasn't been a buy box ever since june 26. it actually might be a little better for sellers to not have a buy box on their listing so then once a customer like looks at this item they're gonna automatically give them a list of different sellers. And of course, they're probably gonna pick like the cheapest one, but you never know. You can see from ever since this listing was made, three months ago, one month ago, one week ago, or today. I usually just look at the three months. You just wanna make sure that the sales rank has always been under 100K. And you're really just gonna hover the highest it's been was 18,124, which is still good. You want to make sure the buy box is steady. There's not really much to go off of because there's only been a buy box around May and June. This is basically the second graph is just like a category sales rank. So like this is the sales rank in the grocery category. And then this is the sales rank in the instant coffee um, category. And then also this third graph is basically just the offer count. Like let's say that you have suspected IP issues with with this listing you just want to make sure that the offer count doesn't decline 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 because then that's how you know that there's multiple sellers getting messages from the brand saying not to sell their items now that we've gone through how to use the software and what we look for in the software is I want to show you how I look for products to resell so what I would do is go to the offers on seller amp and I would just click a seller who doesn't have too much ratings but has like at least some ratings so I don't want to see a person that has like two 111 ratings because they're probably like wholesale i would probably want to see a seller who has maybe like less than 25 ratings we can do this one so basically this seller right here has eight ratings you're going to want to click on that sellers and then it's going to bring you up the storefront so this is called storefront stocking this is when you look through a seller's store and see if there's any profitable products that you can possibly resell it's a pretty efficient and quick way to find products because if a seller is selling it then it has to be a good product you just really have to find it at a profitable price all these keeper graphs are pretty bad because amazon is selling it so this is the orange shading that i was talking to you about so you don't want to see orange shading like this because that means amazon is selling it it's currently selling it and they keep selling it usually when i click on a seller storefront i automatically look at the keepa on the right side and if it looks like too much orange then i definitely just will disregard it these two i can look at these i won't look at and then also let's say you're only on gated in groceries you can just click on the top here and it'll only show you all the grocery category items that this seller is selling so then you won't have to go through other like products that you know you can't sell if you're not ungated i don't know why but anytime i look for skinny syrup i always see people sell it but when i try and find it at a profitable price i can never find it i'm trying to make some money off some skinny syrup too but no let's look at this one 
See, there's no orange, meaning Amazon has probably never sold this item, which is period good. So the next thing we're gonna do is look at the BSR. All the BSRs for this products, for all of these products actually are pretty good. But right now, let's just look at the organic dried mango bites. So we're gonna click on the picture of the product, and then it's gonna pull up the seller amp right on the side. And then you're gonna click on the A on top here, and it's going to show the item listing. Ooh, okay, so we have 31 monthly sales. Eh, not that good, not that good. Um, oh, look, I can show you how to manually ungate. Okay, so you guys remember, I am ungated in groceries, but it is telling me no. That might happen sometimes, but all you have to do is just go down here, click where it says manual ungate, and then it's gonna take you to your Amazon Seller Central, request approval, and let's see if we can manually ungate. Okay, so we can. So when this shows up, all you have to do is watch the short video. You can't skip through it. And then you have to answer these questions and then you automatically get ungated. Um, I've done this so much times and the questions are always the same. So I can just show you guys real quick. So we have the cheat sheet. So the first one is always gonna be reseller. Second one is gonna be I'm responsible. Third one is gonna be all of the above. Fourth one is gonna be all of the above. And then you just check this off and then you put your email address and your phone number and then you submit it and they automatically approve you on the spot, which is perfect. I see that there's only 31 monthly sales, so eek. But let's actually see how much times, oh look, look, look. So the keep a chart, buy box has always been there look how steady this buy box line is like if there is good monthly sales with this item i would definitely look at it because look how steady it is it's literally a straight line buy box it might have dropped down to 1571 in august 8th but it went right back up and now it's straight again so this is a really good buy box line this is how you're going to want to see your pink line all the time on keepa this is literally so perfect but let's look at the variations so we're going to do this pack of one right go to this side Okay, so the pack of one has 97% rating. 91% of 37, it was 37, 31, 31. My bad, y'all. Okay, so it's so 28 times a month. Eek, that is pretty low. But let's say there was only like two FBA, two or three FBA sellers on it, I wouldn't mind it. So let's see. Come on, come on, come on. And okay, that's not bad. Wait a minute. If you guys can see here, there's only four FBA sellers on this and two FBM. Hmm, interesting. 28 times a month. So if I were to sell this item, I would probably wanna be around the cheapest so then I can get the most sales. So we're gonna click the G, go on Google. Sometimes when you click the G, it automatically like searches up the full name and it never really shows you every store that's selling it, which I've noticed. So what I usually do is just take out like the unnecessary stuff, put that out. It's like when you put extras, it won't show you as much shopping. I also don't like spending too much time trying to find an item because most of the time the cheapest price is going to be on the top. Sometimes you might be able to find it if you like really look into it, but I don't got time for that. Like on to the next one. The buy box right now is at $22.98, this FBA seller. I would probably want to be above this seller because he has eight in stock. And remember, it only sells about 20 something times a month. Well, I would probably want to put my price at $24.69. $24 okay, so now we have to find it below $13. Um, I don't really see anywhere else that they have it, to be honest with you. $13? yikes i don't think any store has it that cheap yeah so this is just an automatic fail um, i should have just left once i saw it said 31 month 31 monthly sales and yeah i don't want this video to be too long but you guys basically know how i search for my products mainly doing storefront stocking and you guys already know how to use seller amp how to use keepa i really hope this helped all the new sellers out there i really just want to see all of you guys succeed and get to that bag if you're hesitant starting amazon fba just remember this you're never going to know if you're good or bad at it until you try and of course trying does not hurt but i assure you once you start getting those sales you're definitely not going to regret it if you guys want to see more of me you can follow my instagram and tiktok i post on there every day and lastly hit that subscribe button like it up and if you got to the end of this video comment the word hustle down below and i'll see you guys real soon on the next one peace I'm looking for the girls on the road